I'm right excited. I am right excited. I bet you can't guess where I am. <laughs> Some will say, but me, I can't believe it. I am so excited. I'll tell you more about it in a bit, but we're air fishing. <laughs> and we're only in, we're only in Bay 28. <laughs> yeah, and I'm chasing codlin. <laughs> <laughs> Always say I don't chase fish, don't I? But I'm bloody chasing them now. Can't believe it. I really can't believe it. Glorious day. No wind. And we're fishing on the River Umber. Bay 28. High tide is at half past five, I think. And it's now half eleven to make sure I got this bay. Because you never know. It's bank holding Monday. Let's cut for the intro. <laughs> I can't believe it. Look at that. It's like a long out lost friend. I came in the other end, what they call the wasteland, but I know it was the point. I come down that track, which is a little bit better. I was so excited, I came air early. I've got air at low water to make sure I get this bay because I figured the rush would be over. And I come around the corner, there's a car parked in it, and I was like, Jesus. But there's a kid running and mum and another kid and the dog running around and I stopped and the, the dad was walking behind. I said, is that your car in 28? He says, yeah, yeah it is. I said, can I squeeze in there? Are you just going for a walk and then slipping off? And he said, yeah, we are. I said, can I just slip my car in van in there? Because I really want to fish that bay. And he said, can't believe it. He says, I'll move me van. I'll, I'll move me car, sorry. I'll move my car. And so I got him in the front seat, drove him down, and he moved his car up there, look. Thank you very much, mate. I can't believe it because I was saying to the wife, if I don't get this bow, I'm gonna be mortified. So that's why I come so early. And then I thought I ain't coming early. Then I thought I might have to come out. Now the mad rush down here is over. It is over. But I just wanted this bay. I know I said to you I was gonna fish with my zip lexus at uh, another mount where I can walk down to the water's edge. But that might come later. It might not, because I've now realised those TF5050s, I can fish with a multiply. I just turn the rod round, you know, it's, it, it, I'm sure I can. I'm pretty certain I can. I'll put a weight on, check the eyes, but it is wrong for fixed bill. But I think I'll be all right, but I'll check it. If not, I'll have to use them, wouldn't with fixed bills. Lots to tell you about my ears and stuff. I'm not mooning today. Well, I probably will. Most probably definitely will. There's a crane down there at the lower bays. So they are still working. Apparently, this winter coming, this end of the bay of Immingham's gonna be shut off like the lower bays are. And they're working up here. So all winter, apparently, I don't know how true it is, this end of the Immingham will be unfishable because you won't be able to get down there. So that just leaves the lower bays. So hopefully, well, if it's true, it's true, isn't it? It's not a lot you can do. I'm so chuffed to be here. I think the excitement's gone now, but I am really chuffed to be here. Um, oh, that was me, cooker. I've got stuff to show you in my cooker and all sorts. Um, I'm gonna have a cook up today. My diet's going well. I'm hungry before I eat my main meal or any meal really. So uh, yeah, diet's going well. Hopefully I'll lose some weight. We have got here, a lot of mud's been ripped out of there. This here used to go down so far and then it'd be covered in mud. So there is now a potential snag down there, as you can see. That's like a concrete path, believe it or not, that walks down there. So there must be another con load of concrete underneath all that mud. <laughs> so I've got a snag point there. So I must try and keep my rods to that side until the water comes up and then it's just reeling and keep it up. There's a lot of weed air as well. 
So uh, we haven't, we've had a lot of tides that have ripped that mud out and not done much air. So, but we're air fishing. This is Vern's old bay, you know, because I've fished 28 so much. And yeah, I'm chasing fish. My mate Lee Taylor, the uh, fished air on um, Friday when I was fishing at East Holton in the rain. And he bloody caught a couple of codlin. I've been going to East Holton thinking that there must be a small codlin there. But obviously that was uh, last reeling, caught a flounder, so I didn't blank. But um, lovely day, even in the rain, met Scott, that was great. And uh, not saying everything's great, because that would just be stupid, wouldn't it? But yeah, he's a nice chap, Scott, and he helped me pull my rod apart. He was tugging on one end, I was tugging on the other, doing some twisting movements as well. I bent my eye, as you know, I've straightened it properly now. Um, yeah, but fair, thank you, Scott, for pulling me, pulling me rod off. It was, uh, I, I wouldn't have been able to use it otherwise, would I? So, uh, yeah, so here we are. I'm looking forward to today. Yeah, it's not about specimen fish. It's not about, oh, are we going to catch a ray or are we going to catch a bass or an hound? I ain't fussed. I want to be here on a lovely day like it is. Um, try and catch a small two-inch codlin. Um, might get one off the beach when I hit the beaches, which should be next week. So, um... Yeah, I've now got some videos in the bank. I've got um, the one with Spolt going up. I've got the one at East Holt and this one. So that's three. So by the time Wednesday come, it'll be two. I'll fish next week on a beach. That'll be three. And I may slip in another one to use my Ziplexes. Um, but I shall set my Ziplexes up with a molly plier and put a big heavy weight on. Check the line doesn't touch the rod blank. Anyhow, yeah, it's enough talking from me. We're gonna have a cook up. I'm here for ages. I'm not gonna talk for two hours before I even get a fishing rod out. It's gonna be hard because I like talking to you. I do like talking to you. Subscribers, well, they're all going well. They're up and down. One minute I've got uh, 5,090. The next minute I've got 5,089. At the minute, we're at 5,090. But I expect by the end of today, it'll be 5,088. <laughs> the woes of YouTube, eh? How can somebody click on my videos, see these chiselled looks and this fit body fishing and then unsubscribe? I don't know. I don't know. But here we are. The tide is out. It is low water. It's now starting to... It is low water. And you could say, why aren't you down there, Vern? You could be fishing now. Yeah, I could. I could also be fishing at Yellow Cross. But, I've got my hotel here, and I'm fishing out of my hotel room. I've got my ladders, it's fantastic as well, because my ladder, it's really short that side, and it's flat. The ladder sits perfect. Everything's perfect about this bay for me. The ladder's set up, it's safer for me to get over and everything. As a matter of fact, this bay should be called Vern. Bay 28 Verns and no one else fishes there apart from me because it's safer for me and my hip. People should have some uh, uh, sympathy for me, shouldn't they? I'm just chuffed about being there today, so. I'm gonna roll this up now. I'm gonna have a cook up. You will get a cook up before I start fishing. I'm going to, because it's so good with the ladder, I'm gonna set a tripod up down there so I can start fishing like I used to down there and then bring it all up on the other tripod and finish off up here. So yeah, I will see you in a bit. Right, well, I'm down there. I never thought I'd be able to do that again. You all right? But I'm down there fishing. It's where it is. I'm uh, got the rod out, um, got the spin fisher live liner on, the selly rods, and we've got on there We've got John Spolt and Black Lug, nice and sticky, and a bit of squid. Seven ounce weight, and we're now going to have a cast out. We're going to fish down there, and when the water comes in, we're going to go up top. So it's usual fishing. That's how I used to fish. First cast. 
never chuck out far because the fish come in. That's too far. Boy, you do get excited, don't you? It's all me muscles that I ain't got anymore. Now, I've got the tide wrong. The tide is at half past five, but it's a 7.2 metre tide, so it's going to be pulling through quite quick here. Eh? There's not a problem with that. Once the water gets up, I'll get over them snags to the left of the bay. Shouldn't be a problem. I've fished this bay many times. Chance of catching a fish straight away. So, you never know. If I'm going to catch a codlin, it could be now. Probably could have cast it out about half hour ago, but I've been on the phone to Brett. And I like to have a bit of water in front of me. So, when I walk down over this slippery seaweed, I can actually um, Stick the rod out and just lift it up so I aren't pulling it in all that bladder rack. And with a 7.2 metre tide, I don't need to fish it all the way down to the seaweed, but I could come back over here and fish it again, couldn't I? Going down and out. So you do get quite a wild fish in here. Um, about the same length of time as you do at, at Yellow Cross. But I like to have my van there, I can get everything at Yellow Cross. I walk down over the wall and you walk along a bit so there's no snags and uh, I'm away from a van so I have to bring everything with me. At the minute I've got a tripod, spare tripod, so I've got a tripod up top with a rod in saying I'm here even though my van's there. So I've got a tripod down there, a rod, my bucket to fill for when I go up. I've got a towel, two bits of bait and a pair of scissors. What I forgot was, was my chair. So I'm now going to go up to my van and get my chair. I didn't want to go up too much, but I can't stand. And I could sit on the floor, I suppose, but it's quite nice sitting in your chair, isn't it? Even though it's too low, I need to get a new chair. So I need to get a higher chair that's more stable and strong because this fat lump lumping in that chair with my hip, it ain't good. So that's it, let's give you a quick show. We're down there. This is how you fish it. When you come here properly, you come down over here. You can see where I am here. Seen my videos loads of times. The ladders fit perfectly there. Absolutely fantastic. Some places I go, it's dodgy. I nearly fell last session. Um, Scott actually held the ladder for me to get onto it it nearly went when i climbed over so but this is what you do you come down there and then soon as the water comes up and it's over this bladder rack which is at the front of the bay there on the sea defense you just go upstairs get yourself sorted um take your rod up and put it in the rod rest up there and then you get your other rod ready and it's fishing two rods then but well what a beautiful blue sky of a day look at that cloud over there There's no forecast of rain. It's just absolutely fantastic, isn't it? See you in a bit when these rods kick off and I've got a two inch codlin. This is what we're here for today. If you're wondering, well, one, it felt so good turning up initially in this bay. It felt like I was back at home. It was unbelievable. Um, that has now gone, but I'm still enjoying it here. But yeah, that, that initial feeling of coming here and getting in this bay was unbelievable. I haven't felt that turn up to a fishing mark for a long time. Um, and we're here chasing. I'm chasing fish as well. So yeah, we're here for a small codlin. My mate had two codlins on Friday. Today is Bank Holdy Monday. It is the fifth, is it? I don't know what it is. 6th of May, so it's 6th of May, time is, Jesus Christ, it's influent is it, time is quarter past one, 7.2 metre tide at about 23 minutes past five, 
I'll fish it until I can see this bladder wreck here which is fluting up because it floats in the water about a foot maybe taller and then I shall uh, reel in and just say if I ain't caught by then I'm not gonna catch well <clears throat> you don't get much better than this do you I went up and got my chair and now I've realized I ain't got my forceps so if I catch a flounder and it's deep hooked I'm gonna have to well, if I get a bite, I'm going to have to then run up, get my forceps, come down before I reel it in. But yeah, glorious day. Got a little bit of wind blowing this way now, but nothing that you'll hear, I don't think. Um, I have turned my van round, which is a bit disappointing, because that's the better view that way. But now I'm facing that way, so. But it'll just be better for the filming, because the wind, instead of it blowing, it'll be, van will shelter it a bit. But yeah, it's absolutely fantastic, yeah. Got my hat on. I have got another hat now with a curtain at the back for my neck because I have to be careful with my neck. I'm ginger. I go red like a tomato. And um, I've just got to protect myself from the sun. Let's hope there ain't much weed in the water. It's quite calm. It's not a mill pond. Um, I just casted that bait out and it went too far. Should have just been a 20 yard chuck. But never mind, we're out there. So next one will be a 20 yard chuck. The water will be up a bit more, but still want to catch a small codlin. I was lucky to catch one in winter, weren't I? It was fine summertime. Well, it caught myself a 59 centimetre. And then I caught, I think I caught two in autumn. Pretty certain I caught two in autumn. I don't know, it don't matter, does it? And then winter was nipping by and it was looking like nothing was going to happen. And then uh, all of a sudden we had that little three inch, two inch codlin, didn't we? Which was uh, so welcoming just to keep it, keep it alive. But yeah, I've been fishing East Holton a lot because it's mud onto the sea defense. There's no snags. It's been nice. I've enjoyed fishing there. I thought there might be a two inch codlin there, but there wasn't only flounder. And there was the odd session I blanked, but we had a good time, cook ups. I'm getting hungry now. I'm having a cook up today and um, Met a lot of people down there, really. Not a lot of people, what, 10, 15, probably. But the main people, the main dog walkers, it's like three of them, but stop every time and have a chin wag. Chin wags get longer each, each time I meet them. So it's good, really. Chat on the way past, then on the way back, they chat again, so. It's been, I've really enjoyed fishing at East Holton. It, it's not all about catching fish, is it? Catching fish is fantastic. It's a bonus, makes it all worthwhile. Um, exciting in its own little way. But it's just nice being out. And today's the first day, the first day that I haven't had my thermals on. So, uh, it's not cold. We shall keep soldiering on. And I'll uh, see you in a bit. Keep watching this rod.
think I've chucked out too far. I think um should have done a 20 yard chuck, but look, I'm here today. I am here purposely for a codlin. It's a spring run. I think I've missed it to be honest, but when my mate said to me he caught two the day I was uh when I the day I caught that one flounder in the rain. But perhaps there's still the odd ones here. They seem to be at this part of the river this year. You've got to give it a go, haven't you? Certainly not a cod season like it was last year. I was king of the cod last year. Not a bloody whisper of it this year. But all the ones that I've had, apart from the little one in winter, have been stonkers. Bloody film keep going, I'm going to have to have a look at it in a minute. Just see you in a bit. I'm going to keep watching this rod so you don't have to. Right, well, I've just been talking to Dougie and Anne. Anne's just had a second hip operation and I've been chatting for, what, 20 minutes? My line's gone round, water's come in, I've now got a bucket of water. So yeah, Dougie and Anna, it was great talking to you. Um, good advice. And yeah, sort my appointment out tomorrow, like I said. Uh, me and the wife will do it tomorrow. We have just chucked it on the mantelpiece, really, but... Yeah, we'll get that sorted. And uh, yeah, it was nice seeing you, nice meeting you. So, uh, I've got Terry down there, the conspiracy angler. Uh, you'll see him on YouTube. I mentioned him before because I was catching flounder and he pulled a codlin out the git. But never mind, it's all good to catch, isn't it? It's what we're here for now. Now, my line has whisked around, so I'm now going to reel it in. So you're now going to see the first bit of proper fishing. You've seen the casting, you're now going to see the reeling. And then I shall bait up and I'm going to chuck it out again. There's a lot of litter in this river, it's picked up a bit because it's zooming in. And when I say zooming in, it is absolutely funneling in. So uh, let's get this reeled in. get this baited up we'll get this baited up again and uh, yeah that ain't straight is it I thought it would be yeah we'll get this baited up get the weed off a little bit of weed on but like I say the water is barreling in baits have gone on the top bait is still there on the bottom so we were still fishing um, I shall get baited up and then I'll bring you back right let's get this chucked out we ain't gonna go out far this time probably about 25 30 yards
there you have it black lug um, from my mate John Spolton he gave me that last time we fished together and uh, really sticky it is really sticky and on top of that on top of that oh let's have a look at me oh let's get down there oh it's too low this seat yeah so yeah lovely sticky black lug not hard all nice and soft and uh tipped it off with some of that indian squid that i've got left over just a tiny little bit i learned my lesson from last time so i've cast it out to the right into the tide run and it's about 25 30 yards so uh not out to the right so it probably isn't out as far as that but it'll swing round because this is a big tide it's going to be hard work but when we're fishing up top if you cast out far enough then um, by the time you get the weight up and you're reeling in it's up in the water and you'll miss all these snags that were to the left of this bay and in front of you because there's a little rocks in front of you but once the water comes in and it's at the sea defence it's perfectly all right but yeah so i've got uh tomorrow me and the wife are finally gonna um pick the hospital i want to go at and then hopefully then they'll contact st who's which is the hospital I want to go to and um, hopefully I'll get in there um, I was just talking to Anne and Dougie there and they they don't see it being a problem at all and Anne from moment of going to, to there um, she got hit done right quick so hopefully you never know it might get done this year but I don't think so we're probably I think we're looking at a year maybe more but Follow this channel and you'll see, won't you? You'll find out my woes and everything. And been and seen the, went to the doctors. I had two appointments on a Saturday. weren't too happy about that. They don't take calls at the surgery, and I'd forgot my appointment, what time it was. So I ended up having to drive down, which isn't a problem. But you know, I couldn't ring up. And they didn't send me a text. They normally send me a tick. They always send me a text Monday to Friday. Obviously, don't do that service on the Saturday. So that's something they could improve on at least. I don't need to call if I got a text, or if I'd read it on a bit of paper. But I don't write it on a bit of paper because they always text you. So they've made a rod for own back. Anyhow, that rod was me driving down. Sorted that out. Come back down. They checked in me air for a syringe, and she said your air's clear. There's nothing for me to syringe out. So. That's that, so I can still hear out of that left ear, but not as good as the right ear. Something has happened to it. So that's where we're at with that. And then I saw the nurse and had my asthma test, which I passed and everything fine. She gave me a prescription for another inhaler, more drugs for my hip, painkillers, and this, that, and the other. And then told me that I should pay monthly for my prescriptions because she told me what she pays which is perfect and you get your prescriptions all on that once you got your certificate which i went on that day and we did it on the sunday no we did it on the saturday actually we did do it on the saturday because then we had a bit of a barney me and the wife because uh, i just asked her to sort my prescription thing out this thing and thank you very much you know i didn't want to know all the ins and outs i just wanted the certificate which i've now got on my phone the wife sorted all that out for me. She's an absolute diamond geezer. Well, she ain't a geezer. She's not that species. She's an absolute. She's a. She's a. She's a. She's a good woman. So yes, yeah, so I got that. So now I've got a load of prescriptions to pick up, and I ain't, I've already paid. I ain't got to pay anymore. So I pay for three months, and then after the three months, if it works well, and I keep getting loads of tablets, I'll end up getting uh, probably a yearly one. Right, we cast it out to the right, like I say, it's tapping around, but I just think it might be the weight moving. Could be crabs, because I did lose some bait off the other one. But what we actually want is a small little codling, don't we?
nice small little codling. Lovely, wasn't it? Lovely day. I put this on because the wind's picked up and the wind was just blowing through my top and it was, I mean, I could have put the thermal top on and that would have been perfectly all right. But it's quite nice not being trussed up. So I put this on, it stops the wind blowing through. They are quite good, these. Probably because they ain't got zips on. You know, anything with a zip on ain't so good even though they're apparently they're the best sips in the world and then they block me on ebay so i can't buy from them never mind i don't want to wash it because if i wash it it's going to fade in it but i've got mud on it from the last time out so i suspect it'll need washing on it So the water is coming in now, look at this. And there you can see it at the front of the bay. Eh, water's coming in. Once that comes in and picks that weed up, we shoot up the top, start fishing up there. So what I'll do is, my drag is set on that rod, I'll take everything up and then I'll take the rod up I'll reposition my rod up there and then I'll take the rod up up there and get it where I want it and then come back down and get the tripod but yeah that's where we're fishing will I catch a codling today? no my luck no I've got size 2 hooks on they're offset bait holder hooks. I've got black lug and squid on. I have got some crab with me. So I may fish crab and squid on a small size two hook. Just make some small baits up. Had nothing to eat yet either when i go up there and start fishing i'm going to get the other rod chucked out and then i'm going to have a cook uh, i've got to show you the modifications i've done to the cooker basically fixed it but i feel as i've got to show you the modifications or the fixing i've done on the cooker because i feel i know you all So really, when this tide goes down um, and it gets to where it is now, I could come down here and fish where I am now until I can't fish anymore. You can fish a long while here, but the problem I have is I've got a bug at it and once the water gets to this sea defence here that you can see all these stones, um, it'll be slippery with my rubber wellies. I need to get some boots with... Um, some uh, spikes in it and then I might be able to do it and then anyhow even when my hips are done I still need to get a pair of them because one it'll be safer for me I'm now getting older What's the time? The time 
is quarter to three. High tides at 20 past five. Um, And that weight is holding bottom actually. If you cast into the tide enough with the weight, I've got an eight ounce, eight ounce weight on there, seven ounce weight on there, seven ounce. Um, yeah, it holds bottom quite well. I'll bring you back next time you see me I'll probably be at the top um, if you don't see me at the top I'll be reeling this rod in because I've got a fish on it so uh, yeah I'll see you in a bit right we're filming so we've got a seven ounce weight on this one as well we're gonna chuck it out to the right I need to just check We'll have to see if that's too far. Now before, before you reel it in, you'll just leave it to settle. It's got slack in the line, the weight will fall down, the tide will drag it across. Um, and then hopefully it'll bury itself into the seabed. And then take your slack up. Don't just, as soon as it hits the water, Bail, bail arm over and start taking the slack up because unless that's what you want to but it's still swinging round I did a who's chuck out with that one and I'll tell you for why because my other rod's down to the right um, once I'm up here fishing I'll be able to chuck them both to the right and watch them one out long, one out short unless they've both got to go short and then I'll have to worry but we've got plenty of water in now down here I'll show you for now Plenty of water, so that snag that's out there now is, uh, I'll get my weight up in the water and it'll just glide straight in. Me other rod, me other rod is still down here, fishing away. I keep an eye on it. And then what I'll do is I'll knock the bail arm off, uh, well, the live line, and I shall bring it up here, put it in this rod rest, go back down and get that rod rest. But I shall try and carry both up the slope so I ain't got to go down there. And then I can just lean over the wall here and get my tripod in. Terry's getting set up down there. He's uh, He's got one rod out, I think, at least. Might be putting two out, I don't know. But he's down there. I rung him up and had a chat with him. Go check out a Conspiracy Angler. Um, does short videos, really. But I find it really helpful um, because he comes down to these marks. I get to see the weather. His videos team to be a bit longer on the beach. I think he was at Kilnsey. Kilnsey yesterday? Anyway, wherever he was, he was on Yorkshire Coast yesterday fishing. I think he caught a dab. So, yeah, but I've told him, phoned him up and said to him, don't you dare catch any codlin because they're mine. Tongue and cheek. As if he's going to listen to me. He'll probably catch one and then rub it in, won't he? But, yeah, go check him out. If you want to. If you like this video and you've liked what you've seen so far and you don't but you don't like any of the other videos but this one's all right or you think this one's all right and the other ones that you're possibly gonna look at you think are rubbish click and subscribe now but the main thing is if you like this video um, give it a thumbs up and drop us a comment because that will help my channel grow puts me out in YouTube land so if you can do that that'd be great if you then want to subscribe it's even better isn't it it's all free it's not a subscription payment we're floating around 89.90 at the minute can't make its mind up
Right, well, I'm hungry, so I think I might have to have something to eat. So I'll see you in a bit. Right, I'm now going down to get that rod. So we're going to film it. I've got the van open. I've got the other rod out. You've just seen me cast out. So I'm bringing that up because the water's coming in quick. So I've got this camera balanced there. If this falls over, it'll be a new camera. Going over the ladder now. Right, we've gone over the top. Climbing back over now. I need to sort that tripod out. Yeah, one of them tripods is better than the other. Um, don't mind saying that, because it is. Come on, boy, pull off. That's it. We'll put that there. There we go. That's really pulled round to the left now. There we have it. Yeah. So that's everything gone from down there now. Just get this tripod that decided to close up and everything. Obviously didn't do it up tight enough, did I? Sort this tripod out because they're fantastic tripods. But this one, the newer one, isn't as good as the old one, believe it or not. The other one works and grips at the top this one just spins on the ferrules and i think that might be why they don't really sell them now i don't know they do say they don't sell them because of the postage and packaging um but i've got a plan and that is i'm gonna drill it and put a pop rivet in it and once i've done that it'll be perfect but yeah fantastic tripods even though that one's a bit icky but i might actually buy another top because it might just be that but uh, yeah i'll buy one anyhow because then i've got a spare i don't plan on buying any more tripods in my life i've got two and even the one that's a bit icky um that'll do me now we've got one bait over there to the right one bait over there to the left that's dragged round. i have cast it out further so We've got black lug and squid on both and hopefully we'll catch ourselves a codlin because that's what it's about two inch codlin one inch codlin i don't care as long as it's got a mouth it'll bite that up i'm gonna watch these and then you know if i don't catch a codlin and i don't catch a flounder what a beautiful day to, to be here i've been fishing for a lot longer than i'd fish if i was at holton um because i've got easier access over the wall might not look it but it is easier it's a lot steeper at East Holton, a lot steeper and scary. See you in a bit, I'm hungry. Right, we're having a bit of a cook up now. Gas in, gas on. Yep, cooking. Right, so we've got some ham. Love that bit out because that'll be for the next one because I'm having two. Got some ham. We've also got some tomatoes. But I'm eating them. Got some cheese.
You know what's coming, Lloydy, don't you? We've got eggs. Now, my egg breaking skills ain't good. It has been noticed. We'll cut this bread loaf, bread bun. Bread crumbs in. There were hams in there cooking. And you know what my ham will turn out like, don't you? It'll turn out like bloody bacon. Now, what I'm going to do this time... ...is I'm going to break this egg in this cup. Because I'm useless. And that's how my mum shoe me. So we'll break an egg. Oh yes, perfect one. Now, gonna get break that up. That'll do. We'll put some. Now I don't know if this will turn out like an omelet, or whether it'll turn out, or whether it'll turn out like a uh, fried egg sandwich. I don't know, but we're going for an omelet. with cheese and that's what these cheese slices wife did say do you want proper cheese and I said no we've got loads of them I'll eat them just got to put some brown sauce I'm getting panicky now because it's all happening I'm just going to check my rods All right, let's get this egg in. Brown sauce. I hope that cooks all right. Might have to flip it over. I don't want to melt my van either. So let's get the brown sauce in because I like brown sauce and that's the butter brown sauce in now I'm going to get this egg and I'm going to toss when it's cooked I'm going to toss it over to encapsulate that cheese so basically that isn't even an omelette is it Yeah, don't forget to put in the comments what you think of my fantastic cooking because I'm sure some don't think it's very good because I don't think it's brilliant but it certainly tastes good and I haven't spilt any egg in the van well pepper cheese is melting now I love pepper bit more salt it's moving right that's it give it a little bit longer I shall probably flip it now you're saying why aren't you using your square pan burner well that's because I left it at home dinner can you hear that sizzle hey Probably get chip oil on me bloody. Right, I need to get myself a spatula. I was looking on Amazon the other day. Um, I 
you know, the wife washes my cooker every time. She washed it yesterday. And the good thing about it is, I can see my rods out, out the back of the van. I think I should have used the smaller eggs, and I'm using very large eggs. Rods are tapping, but it could be the wind gusts on my line. Right, I think that's cooked. So we're gonna get this. This is gonna be a disaster, isn't it? Because look at the size of this egg, and I ain't got a spatula pet. Do you know what I mean? Wife's not looking after me, is she? Oh, well, I can do it. I want to try and flop it in like that. And <laughs> ah, you bastard! That pans up. Pans up. I'm going to put it like that so that hopefully the heat comes out. Look at this, eh? Let me give you a show here. There we are. Nice bit of uh, coloration there. Some people would say burnt, but I'd say that's flavor. So we got a ham that I browned off, cooked. Um, you could eat it raw any, well it ain't raw, it's ham. So yeah, we got ham in there any, um, bit of salt and pepper on that. And then we put the egg in, then we put the cheese on, flopped it over, more salt and pepper, lots of pepper and brown sauce. And now, it's my dinner time. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. That just burnt my bloody mouth. That's the cheese, isn't it? Well, I'll not say an omelette because that's cooked too far the wrong way. But what I will say is ham, egg, Ham, sorry about that. Ham, cheese, and egg. Fried sandwich, lovely. But very hot. Oh, salt and pepper, brown sauce. I'll eat this. There you have it. I'm gonna have another one because I've got enough ham and I've got some sausages, so I might have a couple of sausages because this diet I'm on. When I'm at home, I only eat one proper meal at night. It looks like it's gonna be the proper meal during the day. So tonight, probably have a bowl of cornflakes. See you in a bit. Well, you guessed it. I've made a second one. Rods ain't moved, lines are staying where they are. So I've made myself another egg butty. Put the rest of the ham in and cut some hot dog sausages up, which are smoky in flavor and put them in. Shoot, loads of pepper, loads. I, I, I love pepper, but yeah, there you go. Look, ha ha ha! I didn't, I didn't bore you with cooking it again because you've seen it, ain't you? But there it is. That's the new one, and I've got dairy lead cheese in that one as well as the normal orangey type cheese for burgers. But that cheese. It goes so soft, it's like it's like a uh, it's like them dipping sauce things. What are they? Where you get um, you get stuff, don't you? And you dip it in cheap melted cheese. Well, yeah, it's like that. I can't remember what that is. It's not souffle, is it? Because that's like something you put in a pot in it, and it's got to rise. But yeah, anyhow, melted cheese, egg, bacon, uh, ham, smoked sausages, egg two slices of melted cheese and shit loads of pepper that's what i wanted to say and i'm gonna eat this so when i've ate this we'll check the rods i think i've got a tap on but i'm gonna eat this before i watch check that rod but it is tapping sorry about this this is very unprofessional but i need to clean that in case there's any uh egg fat on there right so there we have it we're fishing i thought i'd uh, just bring you back but yeah, that rod closest to me was tapping when I was eating me second egg butty. I am full now. 
I feel lovely and full now. Um, I'm bordering. Well, I'm not quite. I, I would say I'm bordering on too full, but I ain't. Yeah, I've got a little tap on there. It could be crabs though, couldn't it? Right, I've got a kettle on the go now. Because I'm plunging some coffee. I'm having a right old feast today. Two egg butties with ham and sausage in, in one. And cheese. And now I'm having another plunged coffee. Time now is just gone quarter to four. High tide's at 5.23, so we've got plenty of time. I've just been told to stop until after high water and fish it right down, but I can't. Um, because I've fished it all the way up, but that sea defence, like I said earlier, it gets wet, slippery, and then me going down there with all my gear and camera gear. To do it once is enough. I've done it before when I was fit. I just can't afford to slip on wet ground. Not that the wet ground will make any difference, it's it's slipping and the the impact that will hurt. Did that rod just go then? I think I've got a fish on there. God, wouldn't it be great if it was a codlin? Ah, oh, my kettle's boiled. Well, that's a kettle boiled. A dark boiled quick, you know. <clears throat> it's only a small little camping kettle. Perfect little kettle. Um, Chelsea's boyfriend give me it. I would say boyfriend because they ain't married like. No kids either. No kids from that that line either yet. But never mind. Anyhow, the kettle's good. There's something on that rod closest to us. I'll tell you that now. I can see it wiggling. That might just be a crab or the wind, I suppose, but we shall have a look in a minute. Just let me coffee brew a bit and then I'll plunge it. And then I can reel in while it's cooling in the mug. You see, you gotta plan things out right. You gotta plan it in order. There's no point me reeling that in and then plunging it and then pouring it in the mud, mug, or mud. That'd be a waste. I'll tell you what, here today after eating them egg and cheese, ham, Butties, um, I couldn't half eat a bloody sweet right now. You know when your mouth goes all fatty and whatever, and you just want to get rid of that taste and replace it with something else. Well, yeah, that's where I'm at at the minute. But I've got no sweets. I have got an apple, but I ain't got a knife. I have got a banana, but I've had two of them. I'll soon look like a banana. Well, that next rod I bring in will be the right, the one closest to us. And uh, I'm gonna go plunge my coffee now. And then I shall bring you back when I reel that in. So that I can then cast that out to the right. See you in a bit. There's nothing on that. It was just a tide on it. Oh, I've drunk my coffee. I said I was going to come back after I'd poured it and plunged it. But I plunged it, poured it and drunk it. So yeah, a bit of weed on that, look. Bit of plastic. Bit of may rot as well. I've got a rigged pre-tied, pre-baited, sorry. How professional is that?
Well, it's a flapper rig. I've got crab and squid on it. Single bait, tiny little bait. There you have it. Just a bit of squid and crab. So I've got two at flapper with that on. I shall chuck this out to the right. Let me just check I'm in shot for when I'm over there. Yeah. Don't need to have all that van on, do we? Look at that. It's amazing what the wide angle that is. And it ain't even on that. Right, put that in there. I would say, I would say, ooh. that there's a little bit of crab activity out there. And that's what I could see, because the bait has all been stripped. Got a tiny bit of lug on there, but nothing really. So I'm going to bait this up. I'm like a bloody match fisherman, aren't I? Hey, I'm like a match fisherman. It's, uh... no, don't get me wrong. You can call it whatever you want when you pre-tire, pre-bait a rig up. So you got one ready. A lot of people call it double pattern, I think. I think I've got that right. Now I've Googled that and uh, that means diddly squat. So it's just a made up word for baiting up a rig. So you've got it hanging on your tripod ready. You know, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bait up another rig and hang it on my tripod ready for the next reeling. You can call it what you like, but when I Google double pattern, it's something like it came up from what I can remember. It's like having a pat on the back twice. Now, that ain't what I'm doing there. I'm baiting a rig up, so I'm gonna bang it on there. Well, I ain't, I'm gonna bait it up, and then I take both hook lengths and put them in my ice box to keep that bait in pristine condition. So I'm gonna cut up some more crab, bait it on there with a squid, and thread it straight down. And hopefully, we'll bring in the left rod, put that on it, chuck it out. I keep bringing crab with me and never using it. So today I'm using it. I want a codlin um, and we're now fishing properly. So see you in a bit. Right, let's get this rudder reeled in now. rubbing through that weed and it's the weed is why I couldn't see the boat one flounder absolutely cracking let's get it in the bar in the water Take the weight off. 1-0 to me because I don't think Terry's caught anything yet. <laughs> he might have done. Right, let's get this unhooked. Well. 
Right, let's get that undone. So, this is the booty. This is the booty of uh, this line. All the weed pushed down the line from the uh, from the eye on the rod. So I'll cut that off. Put that on the floor. We'll sort the plastic out in a bit when it's dry. Tie this back on. Right, get the next bait. Here's the next bait. Crab and squid, kept in the cool box so it keeps it nice and fresh. We'll chuck that out. Now I'm gonna cast it, gonna cast it to the left of the other rod. <clears throat> so we'll come around here and I'm gonna cast it to the left. So, excuse my fat belly, it's getting smaller though as we speak. Well, not today, it isn't. today it's growing. <laughs> so, this is lip hook for a change. Oh, he's a feisty one, this one. Brilliant. And there we have it. One flounder. Not big, probably what, 23, 24, 25, might be 26. Should we say 27? I know. Let's say two foot. So it's two foot. We've got a two foot flounder. Breathing away, lip hooked. Let's get it back. Well, we are coming up to the top of tide time is now five o'clock we've got 20 minutes to lie tide this is what we're looking at i don't know if terry's caught down there but i have not what we come for but it don't matter as long as we catch that's the main thing if i bring a codlin in that's a bonus isn't it but yeah, we've got 20 more minutes of this coming in, then we've got slack water. Um, really been enjoying myself, to be honest. It has been... Uh, it has been rather nice, that air. Well, I've been... Oh, I've been sat over there. In, in sunshine now, am I? feel a bit fat. I think it's them egg butties. <laughs> they were lovely, they were. I'm gonna get in the sunshine. This is hard work, this is easy. I've got the knack of getting out of that. There we go. But the other's a breakaway release thing down here. Someone's been using break, break of rotten bottoms. Why you need a rotten bottom here? You don't need a rotten bottom here. So, yeah, I'm in sunshine, isn't it? It is lovely and warm. 
it was chilly down there in the wind but up here it's a little bit better i suppose it's this wall i don't know but yeah it's uh we've had a flounder haven't we chuffed with that and lip hook that was nice and when i was reeling it in i could feel this like grinding on the line and it was the line going through that bladder rack and then it got picked up as soon as it got down to the swivel where it goes onto the rig um yeah and then i could feel a could feel weight on it but i just thought it's the weed but then the fish come out because it was hanging down low quite a bit so um yeah nice to get it in it both rods are out now i've got four rooks out there now on two rigs off two rods and i've got squid and crab on it so fingers crossed eh fingers crossed we can only come here and try i've just talked talked to carl carl dawson gy grimsby you know you are and uh, he's going fishing wednesday catch an early morning tide and uh, he says to me that he's hearing that there's codlin popping up all over here so by the time this video go out i probably won't be here um but we're only talking small fish i think i think the biggest fish i know of is the one that um matey boy terry got but yeah i ain't bothered what it is i just want a codlin failing that they're coming off the beaches still so got a chance of catching one on the beach isn't there now my next fishing trip should be on the beach i wanted to get some in the bank and coming here i can get them in the bank quite quickly and at the end of the day when you watch van sea fishing you just want to see me fishing and having a rattle on don't you to be honest so does it matter where it is as long as i'm fishing i don't think it does i've been down that route road of traveling here there and all over and uh and i'm still gonna do that but i only fish other places when i go on holiday and stuff i can't afford to be trundling air there and everywhere and to be honest do people tune in to see where you're fishing this week or do they just tune in to see you fish uh I think it's the latter that you want because then you're building the channel, aren't you? Got to have a connection, aren't you? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm going to be fishing in Norfolk this year. I'm hoping to get down on the south coast and uh, obviously Lake District because I'm always up in the Lake District. Well, once a year at least. It used to be twice a year, but bit harder now the girls aren't at them moved out ruined my oldies they have but what glorious day we are here aren't we this chair i've got to get a better chair i've got to get a higher chair and i've got to get a chair that's um a bit more sturdy because i'm scared this is the way i flop in it i think it's going to bloody break oh 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 I think you might have some on that. Well, we've got something looking at it. It could just be a crab attack, couldn't it? That nearest rod. Now, Lee the Power Taylor, he was hit fishing here Friday, pulled out a couple of codlin, and he also had some crab, crab activity, and he pulled out two mitten crabs, so. It is what it is, isn't it? Yeah, no, that was... Perhaps it was something just tapping into the line. Could have been a bit of debris on top of the water, in the water. Could have been seaweed, couldn't it? Could have been anything. But it doesn't matter. The main thing is... I'm sat here in the sunshine on a bank oldie Monday and uh, having a go at fishing and that's what it's about for me. Now I was going to come here yesterday but I woke up and uh, I had belly ache and uh, I get it often and 
and I just have to lay down until it disappears. Luckily, it was gone by half past ten, which is quite good because normally it lasts until the afternoon or it could last two or three days. So, yeah, it was good that that went. So I got myself all sorted right yesterday, got myself organised. It's Tom's birthday today. So um, we took Tom a card round, present, and uh, yeah, and then I got up and come here. So I'm fishing today. So yeah, wish Tom a happy birthday in, his, in the comments. He does a lot for the channel, like quite a lot, like most of it, apart from the fishing. He does all the technical stuff and he sometimes joins us fishing, but only in summertime. So yeah, wish Tom a happy birthday for uh, for Monday, bank holiday. Is it the 6th today? It's the 6th, isn't it? Oh, Christ almighty, I've just remembered. It's the 6th of May, I've just remembered. It's the wife's birthday on the 9th. Shit, so when was that? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Ah, I can't go fishing. I mean, I mean, great, I'll be able to spoil her rotten, wouldn't I? Spoil her rotten. I'll probably do something wrong and get bloody scowled at. Right. Oh dear, I feel you all day. Yeah, the wife will be 69. She don't look bad for 69, does she? I don't know how old she is, actually. How old am I? Oh, Christ, I'm coming up to 56. Shit. So she'll be 51. Is there five years or four years between us? It's four years between. Gosh, is she 52? You're 52, pet. I ain't got my mum here, have I, to just remind me. I'm sorry. You know what it's like, don't you? <laughs> oh, that sunshine. I might have to put my glasses on. I've got special glasses. You've seen them before, haven't you? Yeah. 52. Oh, she don't look a day over 22, does she? Right, I must remember. I'm going to have to set the alarm, I think. So the alarm will be banging off on the 8th. And I'll be thinking, what on earth is that going off for? <sighs> right, back to the fishing. See the factory there? It's fantastic, doesn't it? Rods are there. Quivering a little bit, but it could just be the wind on the line. We've got like a like an easterly north 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 northeast east wind probably if that's the correct terminology. It's been a long while since I've been at school thinking knowing all that. I'd have to have a look on a compass. And I ain't got one. Used to have a compass in the van all the time. But yeah. So those rods aren't moving, are they? It's a nice day, Gordon, isn't it, eh? Absolutely cracking day. Well, it's still on there. It's been picked that. It's been picked that. There's a family, a bloke and a child walk past with his missus that way. And then the bloke and the child walk back this way. 
And I said to him, where's your missus? Are you chucked her in the water? And he just laughed. He says, now I've left my phone in the car. <laughs> so, there you go. See, you can have a laugh sometimes, can't you? The missus laughed as well when I said I thought you'd ch been chucked in. But there you go. Nothing on that. Crab and squid, and it's been nibbled at. Top one hasn't been nibbled at. We're going to change that for black lug and squid. Let's get that done right now. Let's get you back in show. Let's get this out. Same place, probably a mistake. Probably a mistake. Let's put that a little bit higher, that one. Because we're close to the wall. Take the slag up. Two clicks. Right, what I'll do is, I shall get baited up again. And uh, Terry's still down there with his mate. He's got a mate with him now. Um, I shall, uh, Hips hurting a bit. I'm on the Proxen now, which seem to be working now. They give me one, I think I told you in the last video, but they give me one for morn and one for night. 250 milligrams, so I'd soon up that dose because it was not enough. Um, and seem to be working better. Well, Taking two, taking 500 milligrams is better than taking 250, so I don't know. It's, um, I took some ibuprofen, some, can't take ibuprofen with naproxen, it's the same shit. Different, same. So when did I take that? 12.4. So it's been an hour. I took them paracetamol and caffeine. I think the next ones I take, I'm gonna take cucudamol. I can't take them until five, six, seven, eight. Uh, half five, half six, half seven. So pretty much when I'm packing away, I'll be able to take some cucudamol. Um, I should have took cucudamol last time. I didn't think really. I wouldn't say they're any stronger, they just seem to kick in a bit more. So they must be a bit stronger. I long for the day when they give me something really good that'll take the pain away. I've been told that Tramadol does it. But then obviously with Tramadol it's an opioid, isn't it? So uh, it can be addictive and uh, you have to be careful with it, don't you? So Anyhow, back to the fishing. We are, we are fishing. We are at Bay 28, and uh, I now can't hear out my ears. Is that better? A little bit. So, the first squid and crab has come back in, and there's nothing on it. I shall bait some more up because I'm gonna 
do black lug squid and crab black lug squid and crab so i've got black lug and squid on one rod squid and crab on the other so i shall bait up squid and crab again on this one that'll go on the next rod when i reel that in chuck that out and then i shall bait up um black lug and squid on the next one we caught the flounder on black lug and squid you can catch codlin on black lug and squid you can catch codlin on a prawn you can catch codlin on uh, bloody anything because they'll hoover up anything oh hey ho be nice to catch one though wouldn't it here i am in may trying to catch codlin but like Carl said, they're popping up all the way up and down here, sporadically, or sporadically, or is it sporadically, sporadically? Quite often, every now and then, every other day, you know. But they'll be gone soon. I should have come down there and hit Immingham two or three times and did two or three sessions i think coming here for one session to hook a little coddling i think you're going to be it's going to be an impossibility really but you ain't going to do it sad at home here so it's like going to the beach i could catch one on the beach they're being caught on the beach on all coasts so it's all spot luck in it some people are spawnier than others that's all it is Right, I'm gonna get this other rig baited up and I'm gonna keep watching these rods or trying to anyhow. That you can see there. Have I got anything to say today? Yeah. Well, not really. As I was saying, these batteries are really good. When I said it was on four, it might have been on two. It then cut out. But that battery um, didn't seem to work that long last week. So I put it at the top, kept an eye on it, recharged it, and this time it's lasted forever. So yeah, the batteries that I bought from eBay, old, new stock, as they classed it, with a three month warranty, I've come up trumps with it. I don't care that it's cost me a 20 quid extra. The stress relief that I've had from these batteries is fantastic. So hopefully this camera will keep soldering on because it'll do me until I need to get another one and I'll be able to buy that one when it's reduced in price and it'll save me a hundred quid. So yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. I'll see you in a bit. I'm gonna get baited up and uh, hopefully catch another fish. Bloody sun's gone in now, hasn't it? It's now getting chilly. So we'll get this one reeled in. little bit of weed on it I might just pull that bit off because it ain't huge um, bait gone off the top one I kept seeing it twing about I kept seeing it twing about but um, bait is still on the bottom hook so I'll do a quick update on the subscribers, shall I? We started this video... I don't know... So many hours ago. And we were at 5,090, I think. We're now at 5,089. <laughs> Somebody's re-watched it again, haven't they, and thought, oh, what an idiot. Right. 
bit of weed on there. I'll take that off and then I shall uh, lub on. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to cast over this way now because the tide is going out quite strongly. So I'm going to cast it over here. We've got squid and yeah, squid and crab on it. Uh, whereabouts? I reckon out to that red boat. Well, that'll do. Went to the left of it, but it don't matter. Right. That's a bit slack. Let's take some of that up. didn't look right at all. That line looked as though it was right down the side, but it in it's uh yeah it's gone out to the boat. God knows what's happened there. Still keeping an eye on the water because obviously they got that row of rocks down there. So uh that ain't gonna be out for too long. So that one so the next one to pull in is the rod that's the highest. Because this bloody sun's gone in now, I'm going to have to put my coat back on because uh, it's not chilly, but it's just at that point where you think, oh, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. So, updates on subscribers as I'm fishing, eh? How about that, eh? It's a funny old game, you two. Up and down, up and down, up and down. It's like pulling hen's teeth. That's what it's like sometimes, you two. Um, but I'm still putting out videos every Wednesday, one a week. But that may change one day. That may change. At some point, you've got to reevaluate what you're doing, don't you? And then I enjoy what I'm doing, so I'll always do it. But do you know what I mean? You've just got to reevaluate, haven't you? But when will that time come? Because I enjoy doing this, you see. I do enjoy doing this because if I was not talking to you in this camera, I'd be people thinking I'm balmy because I'd be talking to myself. I think I'm mental. So uh, yeah, God, it's a bit slow on fish, isn't it? Now Grimsby's in sunshine. Emmingham is in cloud because of that there, and it's moving at two mile an hour, and there's all cloud all over there as well, as you can see. So I think that's goodbye to the sunshine. But Grimsby. That's still in. That ain't going to be for much longer. Once that cloud keeps going, Grimsby will be in uh, darkness. So I'm going to have to put my coat on, I think, because I don't want to get chilly. Um, but yeah, no, I enjoy what I'm doing. Uh, but, you know, there does come a point in life where you think to yourself, what am I doing? And uh, if you're not the right person for it, you can keep doing it all you want, can't you? But it's, uh, why I'm watching them fish, I don't know. But it's, um, yeah, it's just one of them things, isn't it? But at this moment in time, I'm still making videos. I've got, like, what's, what's this? This is this, this is the third video I've got in the vault. But then I've got one up Wednesday, so that's that. But I've got to either go fishing, it's Monday today, isn't it? So it's, I can't go fishing tomorrow because I'll be knackered. So, um, that's fishing Wednesday. I don't like fishing Wednesday because that's when my video go out. But I'm just going to have to look at the tides, look at the weather and see what I'm going to do. And I can't go fishing Thursday because it's my wife's birthday. So, uh, at least Friday. So it's quite annoying because all last week, all last week, it was a case of, there was no tide there to speak of. And without, without any tide, there was no water in at the right times. I didn't want to go stupid o'clock in the morning. Um, or late at night. It's just one of them things, isn't it? Probably fish too long at the river, isn't it? Probably. But there you go. It's like I was talking to Doug and Anne. Um, 
you don't change you don't change do you you are what you are aren't you and if i want to fish here i'm going to fish here because it suits me because primarily i come here for the fishing filming has become part of it for me it is what it you know it is what it is it's just become part of it i seem to not i couldn't think of fishing without filming some people do don't they they're lucky but i just can't what's the point what's the point of doing that it is i'm pleased i've had a flounder but at east alton well you don't always catch there do you You don't always catch there either, do you? It's, you can't really say, oh, if I was at East Holton, I'd pull out four flounder. Because I've been to East Holton and blanked. But, um, it's been a glorious day while the sun's been out. But I don't think that's going to come out again because that cloud, there ain't enough, there ain't enough wind. As a matter of fact, it's still blowing this way. Why is that cloud going across the sun? That cloud should be going that way, away from the sun. So it must be blowing what I can feel air across here. And up high where the clouds are, it must be blowing a different way. It's like wind traffic. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, I've just cast it out again. That's just for you, Anne, if you're watching. I've just cast it out. Right, let's get this reeled in. I don't want it at such an angle now. crab on it I suppose. Could have been a crab on it. I'll get this baited up and I'll bring you back slightly into the tide but pretty much straight out so that when I wind it in I'm winding into the front of the bay. About 40 yards, that's all. Very quiet, very, very quiet. Big boat's gone out. There must be four or five pairs there, because there's four boats there and there's a spare pair at the end. To load the boats on, you know. But yeah, tide's going out now, as you can see. The water has left the back wall. The water was up here. You can see where it's all wet. Water was right up on a 7.2 meter tide. Um, we're down there. The bladder rack has started to show. That possibly could be the last cast. Probably not. But we don't know, do we? I've now got out there black lug and squid. I just, well, I've got black lug and squid on one and I've got squid on the other. So I will be pulling that left hand rod in shortly because I do not want to get snagged up. If I reel fast, it should be all right. I'm going to sort this camera out because it's all a bit on the hook. So I'll bring it back in a bit. Bait it up and chuck that again. That'll be the last cast then. I've still got water in front of me here to pull it in, you see. Uh, 
That was lucky. That got stuck under one of the rocks. I give it a yank and it cut flicked out. Thank God for that, or else I'd have, I'd have been going over. Thought I'd be going over, not this time of day. So. Yeah. So, again, every time I've reeled in, the top bait is nearly gone. The bottom bait, which should be on the floor, bottom bait is still there. Right. I'm still putting my hooks that are baited up in my cool box with the lid shut and it's keeping them cool so I'm keeping everything as best I can to give myself the best chance I've used squid and lug I've used squid I've used squid and crab to no avail anyhow let's get this chucked out we're going to swap these rods round um, yeah, we'll swap these rods around. Okay. Stonking, innit? A little bit further out, not massively so. Put that there just to settle for a bit. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a slow old day, really. I really thought, well, this just goes to show you cannot chase fish, can you? You can't chase fish. We all know that, I know that. I've always said that, I'm always saying that to keep good. Bloody hell, that's whipped right round. I don't know whether to reel that in or not. Let's see where it is. If it stays there, it should be all right. Because I can bring it over. I just want to keep it in front of the base. So I don't come up the side because there's loads of bladder rack. If I've got to go over, I can go over. It's not a problem. I haven't struggled going over. Um, well, struggle. You see, for me, struggle is like you can just about do it. I suppose I am struggling going over. But I can do it, so. I love fishing. And I love filming as well. And chatting. Um, I love fishing on my own. And I also enjoy fishing with others as well. Some people only have um, incoming calls. They don't have outgoing calls. Like, do you remember that years ago? We, where you could uh, phone BT up and say, I only want incoming calls. Yeah, some people have got that. And don't worry, Brett, it'll soon be sunny all the time down in Norfolk. But it'll always be windy in Yarmouth and Galston. Because it never is anything else, is it? I don't think I've ever been down there just lately without any wind. And I ain't talking about eating a lot of processed peas before I go down either. Another DFDS boat going out. I don't know what sort of boat that is. It looks like it's got huge windows and I can see right through them. So, um, another little boot here with all containers on it. That looks a bit dodgy. So, anyhow, that's a nice picture, isn't it? Now, the last cast out. That is pulling round that line, you know. Oh no, in, that is that's prob no, it's held bottom now. It's all right, I can pull that straight into the front. My line is right under the camera, so I should come up down here. Um, same with the other one. So all's looking good. So I'll see you in a bit. There's a few crabs down there, to be honest. It's 
So I think, yeah, we've got just squid on there now. Flaps of squid threaded on the hook. And I'm feeling a bit tired and worn out now. So, um, ages ago, I would have jumped over the side. Well, I'd have been over the side now, fishing. Um, yeah, I don't know where to go next. I think we're done there now. I could keep coming here and never catch a codlin. Um, it is what it is, isn't it? I think after the year I had last year, um, yeah, you think you crack it, don't you? You really think you crack fishing and it's all brilliant. Um, struggling here and in this air now, it's, like it's blocked up. When I get them, I'll spray some stuff in it. But um, yeah, you think you crack it, don't you? You think you've moved that next level of being a great, brilliant fisherman. But then when I speak to John, John two or three weeks ago won a competition in Norfolk. Um, had a right good day. Um, and then the next time he went out fishing, he lost, you know. That was against me, so I can understand that. He only had two 21 centimetre flounders and I had a I had two bigger flounders, one was 21, one was 28, and he shook one of mine off as well. Bit of match cheating there. But yeah, now, it don't matter what level you are at fishing, joking aside, um, it's, you never ever crack fishing. Do you ever crack anything in life? I don't know. You think you crack happiness and then you go have an argument, don't you, and balls that up, don't you, or, You'll think you'll crack dryer and then you'll something will go wrong, won't it? Everything. Nothing nothing is is perfect, is it? Even if you're a welder and you lay down a nice weld, one day you'll come in and do a crack one and get a load of porosity in it and that's buggered, isn't it? I've got a bite. I've got a bite. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you and I've got a bite. I've got a bite. That's probably a bloody crab, isn't it? Yeah, so you think you crack fishing, don't you? Talking about fishing only. And uh, you don't. It, you have a good days and you have bad days, don't you? You have good weeks, bad weeks. Good seasons, bad seasons. I'll always cherish last season catching all those codlin and cod. I think it's a crab. I think there's lots of crabs in there. That's what I think. But yeah, you think you crack, crack it, don't you? You think you've had a good season. Um, and then it all goes wrong, doesn't it? But... That season last year of mine, I can't see me ever replicating that. There'll be years where the cod come in more or hounds. It's like last summer, the summer before, I was catching hounds all the time. Rays, dogfish, and then all of a sudden, last summer, like last winter, I had a, f not the last winter, it's just gone, the winter before, two winters ago, I had all those cod, 54 in total. And then the summertime of that year, I had, well, I, I can't remember. If I had two, I might have had three hounds. That's it. It was hard work. Anyhow, I'm going to keep watching this rod. It did tap just then, I think, on film. But since I've looked at it, it isn't. But I will reel that in. But it will be. I need to sit down now for my hip. I will uh, reel in. When that water's down, I'm gonna leave them out there. There's barbs on their mucks, and if I catch a fish, I'm just gonna have to climb over the wall and chuck it back. Um, I've got a bucket of water, so I'll carry them over the wall in the water. So they'll come off the hook, straight in the bucket, straight on the wall, over the wall, straight in the river. I think that's a crab. Now I've had on them two flappers, I've had no end of um, top hooks stripped. So it's weird, isn't it? Because as that line goes in the water, this one's on the floor, definite. This one's on the floor as well. But why they're taking the top one, I don't know. No good putting a camera in that river because you won't see now. I think there's crabs 
picking away at their mugs. That last one I reeled in was quite heavy and then I think it got caught on summer and then I yanked it and yanked it and reeled. Um, all the grip weight wires had come out, which that's the first has happened today. And nothing on it, all the weight went. So I would say that was probably a crab on there. Probably got caught behind a rock or something. Trouble is when you get some on that, if you can't get it up quick enough and it's down, you're gonna pull it into a snag, aren't you? Right, that's enough rattling on. Thank you to everyone that has subscribed, watches this and gives me thumbs up and stuff. I felt as though it's something I've talked about today. We've not touched politics much, have we? Because that'll switch them off. You gotta be careful what you talk about. Because I could start talking and rattling on about this, that and the other and lose every subscriber I've got, I think. But couldn't we all? Right, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put this down, watch these rods, check this water, bring you back when I reel in. Look at that sky. That is blue now, isn't it? Look at that, wow. Look at them clouds. Absolutely stunning. Look at that. That could be a thumbnail, Tom. Well, we're gonna reel these two rods in now and see what's on it. I've had a flounder up to now. Apparently a chap down in the other bay's had a haddock. Small haddock, but he's had a haddock. So that'd be nice, that'd be all right, wouldn't it? But it's still not a codlin, but we came here today to catch codlin. There might be one on these, wouldn't there? I doubt it, but the right hand rod has been tapping, but it's probably just crabs. So let's reel this one in first and uh, get disappointed. Plenty of weed on it, but the bait is still on it. That's the thing. The bait is still on. So we'll reel this one in. Let's see <laughs> what we see. Let's hope there's summer on it, eh? I don't think so, but... Right, the battery might run out. If it does, we'll stop. Well, I'm pleased with that because it's the last reel in flounder again. So, uh, lip hooked as well. So we'll get that unhooked and I'm gonna have to go over the wall. He's a feisty one. <laughs> Bit of Yoda that, isn't it? He's a feisty one. Is it Yoda? I don't know. Yeah, another flounder. I don't know what, one, two, 25, 26 centimetres. Nice condition, lovely flatfish. Oh, scorpion flounder again. I'm helping it a bit. But yeah, so hey, two fish. Can't can't grumble at that, can you? You can't grumble at that. So yeah, I'm gonna put this in the bucket and return it. I might video return it. I could fall over, can I? 
Right. Let's just check us filming. Yep. One that flounder, so that's two flounder, but it's not a haddock, is it? And it's not a codlin. But yeah, well done to them if they've caught a haddock and the bloke's right, brilliant. But I've had two flounder and I'm chuffed with that. He's a feisty one. Right. I don't know how far I can go down there. It's gonna, this flounder is gonna get chucked in. I'm telling you that for nothing, because there's no way I can get down there. I ain't gonna go right round there. I'm only gonna go to that corner there. So I shall put you air right. You aren't gonna see me, and then you will see me. Doing all this with a bad hip as well. Right, don't feel too bad at the minute. Right, I am coming. Tom might cut that bit out. You bastard. Well, it's not good walking that way with a bad hip. That's not good having your, your bad hip up high. Oh, this is steep. This is steep. Oh, shit. Oh, bollocks. And it's wet. Oh, I can only go so far. Chuck it, I can't do anything else. Right, well, he's got two options. He's gone, he has gone. He's in the water, he did a bit of surfing, and then he went down. Now it's up to him whether he swims out into the channel. If he swims down onto the bladder rack and sits there and the tide goes out, he's an idiot. But that shouldn't be the case. Put that over there. Oh, I'll tell you what, it is. When your leg is up higher on the slope, so like if you was a haggis, you'd have two legs shorter than the other, wouldn't you? But I ain't a haggis, and both my legs are the same length. Well, the other way it ain't so bad, but that way it was bloody terrible. So, so this way ain't too bad. It doesn't hurt so much. The other way, that did hurt. So yeah, so two flounder. That's not bad, is it? Can't can't fault that really, can you? Um, it would have been nice to catch a codlin. That's what I've come here for. There's been reports of it, my mate has caught them. Um, but, weren't to be, was it? Wasn't to be. Let's get these off. Wasn't to be. Let's, don't fall now, Vernon. Don't fall now. Oh, oh bastard. That's, oh, that's it, we're there. I'm not going to fall now. Yeah, so that's, that was good, wasn't it? Had a chat with you about my subscribers. Uh, the subscriber count. 
and what it's like in the month of these few months of summer um, you've seen the sun you've seen the water you're now looking at a lot of weed as well look at that it's not a lot is it it's only a little but we've got it on this one as well I shall cut that swivel off and uh, wind that in baits are still on the we ain't got any bait on this bottom snood um, but we've got bait on the top and we've got bait on both of them but this is the one that was tapping away and that was the one that had the flounder on so all my old bits of bait I've put on there I've got bits of crab on there and stuff and over there I've got some squid heads Andrew you can see the crows will get them now if you can see down here now that flatness there in that water we're virtually onto the mud so that's sediment over there and the water's coming across so now when you scoop it through you'll get all mud all over your weight and rig and everything don't want that I've timed that to perfection but if I was just a little bit more energy and didn't mind because if I slip and my left leg go or my right it hurts my groin so I don't want that but normally I would go over there and fish it going down as I fished it coming up but this will just be too slippery and the wet concrete if there's any green weed there it's slippery so you got to be careful you got to know your limitations but to go over and fish this tide going out now it'll probably chuck out quite a few fish to be honest but it's not the case for me because it'd just be too much but this has been fishing at Immingham in Bay 28 it was fantastic to come back here again I felt such a warm glow and feeling when I came here I've, I haven't felt that for a long time um, fishing wise so yeah it's been really nice sun's been out got a bit chilly put the coat on then it warmed up again I've had chats with Dougie and Ann um, Terry stopped and had a chin wag um, Terry you need to bring some food with you mate so you can fish the tide going down because you're always packing up at high water and you're hungry so you need to make yourself some sandwiches <laughs> but yeah this has been Bay 28 on the River Humber I've had two flounder it's been uh, it's been all right hasn't it it's what my sessions are all about it's just about coming out having a natter um, saying what's on my mind upsetting a few people probably not upsetting others but it's just me it's the way I am and that's it so it's been great and that chimney has been blowing away from me for the first time for ages so you can't knock that either next time you see me it'll probably be on the beach I am thinking of hitting the Lincolnshire beaches this week but the, the, the slipper in the works is the wife's birthday. I can't screw that one up again. Again. <laughs> I've screwed them up in the past. It's just it's not worth not being talked to, I'll tell you. So, got to think of something. I've got a plan of where to go and take her out for a meal. Um, been there before, so it ain't far away either. So, putting a bit of effort in, that's the main thing. So, Next time you see me, it'll be on a beach. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I haven't checked the weather. Tides I have checked. Weather I haven't. So uh, it'll be a late one though. That's the only problem. Thank you for watching. Tom will cut that bit out. Thank you for watching. And uh, don't forget, thumbs up. And leave a comment help the channel get put out there. We'll see you anon.
Feuchtiwan. 